He flew his own chopper on his own dime to help stranded victims, but that man says he abandoned his rescue missions after a fire official threatened to have him thrown in jail. Well, that man now wants answers and turned to Queen City News Chief Investigator Jody Barr to help figure out what went wrong here. This is the original post that I was reading when I decided to go up and help. It's a long post, but she's saying that her kids and family and animals are, are trapped. No way out, no supplies, and the only way in or out is accessible by helicopter. Limited cell service and no water since Friday morning. I thought I, I have a helicopter and maybe I can help. Jordan Sidham piled food and water into his helicopter Saturday and headed up toward Banner Elk. The only way through, a mountain gap in Lake Lure. This is the mountain valley that you would have to fly to to get to Black Mountain where we were escorting people out. This is a mountain range and this is a mountain range. The only place to, to fly through with bad visibility, low cloud coverage is Lake Lure. The cries for help from people stranded without food, water or electricity hit social media soon after the flooding last Friday. But my parents are stuck there. Their address is Banner Elk. They are in the first condo. If you receive this, please give me a call back. Thank you. Sidham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I could hear the desperation in her voice. This is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham and his son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And his, his response was, there's so many messages, I, I don't think we can't not go help. Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out and go out, help her in, put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm gonna take her down, come back. I'll take him, I'll come back, and then I'll get you, okay? I originally left my son co-pilot on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim, and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. And, and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son what we were going to do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. I told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not gonna leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're gonna be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explaining she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation and um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Sidham and his nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original 
chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey, man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot, and, and they, they won't, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confronta confrontation with uh, Mr. You feel like that was coincidental, or, or do you think that that was because of what happened? I don't think it can be coincidental when there has not been one in place the day before doing rescue operations, the night of, the morning of, that took place after our altercation. I think there would have never been a uh, TFR put in place had we not had that conversation. If I had to do it over again, I, I would have stopped and I would have rescued as many people and, until they decided they were going to arrest me. Well, for now, we've chosen not to name that Lake Lure fire official because communications in and out of that town are still difficult. We want to include his side in this story, and if and when he responds to our messages, we will include that. The good news is I saw a video of a Coast Guard helicopter landing in Lake Lure this morning, so hopefully some of those mountain rescues are underway today. From Pageland, Jody Barr, Queen City News.